I just want to review uh, the, the, S, the bill, the Senate bill S-2006. The, the vast majority of the bill revolves around creating a national rare earth refinery. Uh, if you didn't know, rare earths uh, and thorium love each other. There's very few rare earth mineralizations that don't have uh, large amounts of thorium in it. But if you want to make the full course of 16 available rare earths out of the 17 rare earths, uh, you need to do monazites, xenotimes, and that we do not do in this country. There is no, there is nothing being done in the United States or anywhere in the Western world. Uh, and that is because when you do monazites, you probably get about as much thorium out of the mineral as you do rare earths. So the bill, S2006, basically was solving both problems at once, which is exactly what had to be done. There's other rare earth bills floating around out there. But the rare earth bills are ridiculous. They're like, make mining easier. We should get rid of environmental laws. And, and it's like that has nothing to do with why people aren't mining rare earths. People aren't mining rare earths because what they end up with is low level radioactive byproduct, right? So that, nobody uh, is not mining rare earths at all. Pretty much every mine is already mining rare earths. Every iron mine, titanium mine, phosphate mine, they're all producing ore that contains very large amounts of rare earths, but what they're doing is throwing that ore right back into the ground, and the BLM, the Bureau of Land Management, sort of pretends that they never disturbed it. Otherwise, we wouldn't do any mining in this country at all. So there's no need for an independent rare earth mine. A standalone mine to mine rare earths is ridiculous. We get almost all the rare earths we need just from uh, mining everything else. So it's, it's, you know, quote unquote garbage. It's waste. It's stuff that these other mines would love to get rid of because what do they have now? They've got a huge liability in their tailings lake, right? So the, the, the bill, to put it very simply, was to create a single place in the United States that would produce all 16 of the rare earths, especially the heavy rare earths, the the, the ones that we absolutely cannot make today in this country. Uh, along with that, one single refinery would have been the Thorium Bank, or the Thorium Strategic Reserve, or what have you. It's called the Thorium uh, uh, Products and Resources Corporation in the bill, something along those lines. But what it is, its physical embodiment is a literal bank, an actual building. It has an actual design. Right here in good old Chicago, we used to make a lot of uh, thorium, thoriated lamp mantles, you know, for lanterns, the original uh, high efficiency light source. Uh, right here, right, right over here, if you were reading the Tribune a couple weeks ago, they talk about how to this day, uh, they, the construction sites are halted because they find thorium and monazite sand still, oh God help us, you know, and uh, you know, the, and their remediation of course is insanity where they barrel it up and send it out to Utah instead of covering it with about an inch of clay and, you know, forgetting about it like they should. Same with these guys, the company that made the mantles moved out to West Chicago, you know, like any company in the 30s just sort of threw their extra stuff out the back door and, you know, in a way that's fine. Uh, in the 1980s, they found a pile of this stuff. They freaked out. It's radioactive. Holy crap, what are we going to do? And what the company Kerr McGee said, well, we'll cover it with about a foot of clay and some topsoil and we'll call it a day. And people are like, you can't just do that. And it's like, well, that's how it is in nature, man. You know, and they're like, no, it's got to be better than nature. Yeah, the trouble, it's kind of funny because if you don't laugh, you'll cry. They've spent, uh, they've spent $800 million over 30 years removing a little bit of thorium. I mean, 800 million, what could you do with $800 million, you know? $800 million. And then Energy Solutions is claiming they're going bankrupt. They're like, we just don't. And, and you know, the trouble is they'll never, ever finish cleaning it up, right? Why would they? The checks keep coming. We're always going to find new stuff to clean up. 
And because you find thorium pretty much everywhere, you know, you're, you're going to keep having to clean it up. So that's the liability. That's why we say there's infinite. When people ask us, well, what's the big deal? Why can't we have 20 of these facilities around the country? It's like we're going to have one facility. We're going to have one thorium bank so we know where every microgram of this stuff is and so that this can never happen again. This is what happens when you do try and build a rare earth refinery without a thorium policy. This is the Linus, the LAMP facility, the Linus Advanced Metals Plant in Malaysia. They spent, that is wrong, it's $800 million and going straight north into a billion. They are producing rare earths today after years of these protests. And uh, these protests are funded by uh, na Chinese nationals and uh, but that, you know, China's not an idiot. They want to retain their monopoly in, in the game. So Linus today probably makes about half of the rare earths there, and they make them almost exclusively for Japan. Japan's the biggest investor, and they're probably about 60 days away from bankruptcy. Every rare earth that they produce costs about two to three times what they're actually pay, uh, able to get for it, because China has crashed the market. And I'm sure Jim will probably touch on that later. Uh, but you can see this is the liability. How much, you know, and the liability is they didn't have a thorium plan. What was their plan to store thorium? Perfectly legitimate. They're, they were going to mix it with cement, pave, you know, uh, tailings like they even going to pave roads. They're like, we'll build new roads. And they're like, you're going to make nuclear radioactive roads. It's like, all roads are radioactive, dude. You know, but, uh, uh, but. That, it was just foolish and unpolitical. They did not have a plan. They should have known that somebody was going to catch them with their pants down. Even though it's perfectly legit, you, you absolutely could do that. And that's what Molly Corp in California does, except they don't make roads with it. They're just making the world's biggest parking lot, basically, of just pure concrete tailings waste. There's one mine in the United States that probably has well over a billion dollars of recoverable minerals in it. If somebody says, what, what's, the, what's the liability for thorium? Well, it's at least more than a billion dollars because they won't recover those minerals because they'll have a thorium problem afterwards. So a billion, two billion, 800 million? You know, so there is a real thorium problem and this thing here is what will solve it. The thorium bank is, uh, like I said, it's a phys that thing over there is the physical embodiment of the bank. Uh, the way that uh, dry cast storage is, uh, the, out in the open, uh, silo storage, you know, you can sort of see the evolution of how we uh, came up with this. We obviously did not want to expose anything to the elements, so we came up with this insanely ridiculous, triple redundant, seismically isolated uh, uh, building that is seismically isolated inside another building, and inside that candy-coated structure is a stainless steel silos. Through a proprietary process, the thorium oxide is encased in a polymer. It's pelletized it, so that no radon can escape. But God forbid it does, those, uh, those, those silos are chilled and the radon that does escape turns into a liquid. And the one gram of radon that we should be able to collect over the course of 20 years will be collected. Those uh, are chiller pumps, those little pink things down there. If you saw the roof, let's see, that would, you can see little red dots on the roof. There's uh, sensors, gas sampling, sample tubes. Uh, if you look below there, there's sampling wells, pilot tubes. The only access to this facility is through this, uh, this thing here, that uh, pipe gallery. And uh, no humans are ever going to be allowed in here. It'll uh, be covered with a nitrogen cover gas. And it's all 100% automated and co-located with the rare earth refinery. It's got a 500-year standing seam roof on the outer building. The inner building is a pure precast concrete shell. And it's isolated on two meters of uh, crushed limestone and seismically spring-loaded 
And, you know, so, so basically we've gone from, you know, uh, the Chinese store their thorium. They've, the Chinese store their thorium in sacks now. They used to just leave it on the ground. Uh, so, you know, but they know they're going to need it in the future, so now they're starting to put it in sacks and they put it in a little Morton building. They used to just sort of leave, which actually, uh, thorium oxide, now thorium nitrate's a different story, that's water soluble, but thorium metal and thorium oxide are not water soluble and they're very heavy. They're not going to blow away in the wind, they're not going to get into your water table, they're not bioreactive anyway, so if you ate it, you might, you know, poop funny for a while, but, you know, it's going to come right out of you. Uh, uh, as long as I have this up, you might want to notice, see that thing, that spout of fluid coming out there? Remember, uh, I said China gets a, a, a most of their rare earths from a thing called ionic clays. If you remember how they used to mine for gold in the old days, they'd just spray the side of the mountain with a fire hose and the mountain would come slushing down and they'd grab it in a trough and they'd do gold separation that way by spraying the side of the mountain. That's what China does to get the clay to release the rare earths, except that's not water, that's nitric acid. So, they, so they're spraying, the, and those ponds, those are nitric acid. Those, that's lakes of nitric acid that they're, so the Batao or Bata city, a city of two and a half million people and one of two rare earth cities, two and a half million people process those piles of ore and uh, and actually, that's not a very fair picture. That picture up there, you see it a lot in publications. But to be honest with you, China is very sophisticated now. They get up to seven nines of purity. Yeah, well, that's what happens when you get firsthand use of stuff. I mean, that goes back to my initial talk was if you stop working with things, your knowledge stops growing. And if you have ever seen the famous graph of United States patents in rare earths falling like that while Chinese patents in rare earths go, they just perfectly cross each other. And that's exactly what happens with any technologies, alloys, rare earths, electronics. If you're not making them, you can't hope to be the one designing them. You know, this fantasy that we're going to be, oh, we're going to be this design culture and this idea culture. Well, how do you get ideas unless you're working with it? Uh, so anywho, that's it. That is the thorium bank. You can tell all your friends and family that this incredibly ridiculous overblown thing is our solution to allay your fears from the nightmare of alpha particles coming off a little bit of thorium. Uh, but that is what we have to do and we're happy to pay the price if it means bringing a rare earth economy back to this country. It would mean hundreds of billions of dollars of foreign direct investment. And if, if all the Thorium Energy Alliance ever got done was that Thorium Bank and just had millions of pounds of thorium just sitting in tubes somewhere, we would be incredibly successful. Uh, the good news, the happy ending to the story is that the Thorium Bank pays for itself by charging the rare earth refinery a storage fee. We collect it. We collect their materials, but we also collect a fee. And with that fee in excess of what it costs to store this stuff, that is your pathway to funding things like Thormag, thoriated lenses, advanced lighting, catalysts used in cracking, uh, medicines, and of course, our favorite thing, energy. So you should pray that S2006 gets passed someday in some form because it'll be a direct a direct straight line arrow towards the question, how do we fund molten salt reactor research? Well, we fund it with a thorium bank. And in the meantime, we will have saved the United States by producing a, a, the only other supply of rare earths on planet Earth. And that'll be very, very good for the Western world. All right, I'm gonna shut my pie hole now.